today I'm going to tell you about our, our, our journey and the challenging uh, goal of trying to find new drugs that can help in treating blindness. So this slide kind of summarizes everything to do with our, our research. This one here indicates that blindness doesn't necessarily mean complete absence of sight. It's not like when you close your eyes. Blindness for people can be like this person here with age-related macular degeneration, that you lose central vision. For other people, other forms of blindness, they lose peripheral vision. You can have night vision, or loss of night vision, or you can also have loss of color vision. So there's lots of forms of blindness, and really the impact there is when you lose the ability to read, to write, to drive, to work. So there are, this one here indicates that there are drugs that can be used to treat many types of blindness, but there are also many cases where these drugs only work in a small proportion let's say 30 to 50% of the patients given the drug. And it's also the case that some of the drugs will only work for a couple of years. And the last one here, I hope you can see, is that there's also an issue around that some of these drugs have an undesirable route of delivery. That's a needle going into the patient's eye to deliver this drug for a patient of an age-related macular degeneration. And this has to happen once a month or once every two months. And that puts a huge burden on the patient but also puts a huge burden on the, on the healthcare system. So what we want to do is develop new drugs that can have improved delivery options and can improve vision. So how we go about that is probably something that you wouldn't have thought about is using these guys. So these are zebrafish. You may have seen some of them on one of the exhibits outside. They are small tropical fish, come from the Ganges River in India. This is a big magnification of these fish because these fish are about three millimeters in size at this stage. This is a five day old fish. Uh, okay, so the maximum they'll grow to as an adult is two to three centimeters. So I'm gonna try and explain to you how we can use these fish to discover drugs. This is a picture of the eye and really this front part of the eye, the cornea and the lens are involved in focusing light, a bit like the microscopes you saw outside, focusing light. The part that we're interested in is this very thin layer at the back here in red that goes all the way around. This is known as the retina. The retina is the part that detects light, processes those signals, and sends it to the brain. It's a bit like the part in your mobile phone that's able to get that text message or get that photo that you're sent, process that, and display it on the screen. So things that happen to disrupt the retina are going to cause imp uh, impairment in visual function. Now, this is a bit of a complicated slide. There's a little bit of jargon on it. Hallmarks of blindness. So blindness uh, comes in many forms. This is Dame Judy Dench, who has age-related macular degeneration. The major risk factor for this is age, smoking, diet. This is a very prevalent disorder that affects millions of people worldwide. This is a child who has an inf inherited form of blindness. So this child, his parents would have one good copy, one bad copy of a gene. This child inherited the two bad copies of the gene. That meant this child, when they were two months old, is blind due to an inherited form of blindness. Now there's lots of other types of blindness, but some of the features in terms of retinal blindness, that part of the back of the eye, is these features here. Okay, and we put them together in this acronym, PAIN. Okay, so what, what these mean are, I'll skip to the second one, Angiogenesis means the growth of new blood vessels. So you can see here, you've probably seen in your own, when you go to the optician, these here are the blood vessels in your eye. Like the mobile phone, that's the charging system. That's the system that nourishes your eye. In forms of blindness, those vessels firstly can die off. So your eye is not getting a good blood supply. Now the eye is dynamic. It's not like a mobile phone. It can actually decide to grow new blood vessels. So it grows new blood vessels, but it grows them in the wrong place, and that causes blindness. So it's a bit like charging the wrong parts of your phone because you've put in a new kind of circuitry. Permeability means that these new blood vessels become very leaky. So these new vessels have grown into your eye, now they're leaking fluid, they're leaking blood, and this is all going into the front of the patient's eye, and that's part of the reason that there is visual impairment. Inflammation, there's new cells come in. You can regard that a bit like you put your phone down in the sand on a beach and all the sand gets in, again it disrupts the function. And neurodegeneration is where cells that are important to capture the light and process it 
those, the circuitry, those cells, die. And because those cells can't detect the process light, you have visual impairment. So as I said, we use zebrafish to do our types of screens for drugs that can reduce these leakiness, new vessels, inflammation, or dying cells. Is this important? Well, this here indicates the market. So this says 4,500 is the market in the US of retinal therapeutics. But if you look at this side here, this is in millions. So the retinal therapeutics market in the US is 4.5 billion a year. So this is a very significant problem. It's also a very competitive field. Lots of people looking to identify drugs that can treat these symptoms. So drug discovery is a very challenging process. It's like taking a voyage out on the remote Atlantic coast looking for new drugs. How do I find a new drug that's going to, to um, be beneficial in this case? And it sometimes feels like you're on a single man boat out there battling, battling the elements to find your new drug. First tell you, a case I'll tell you about is, I said new blood vessels grow inappropriately in some forms of blindness. So one thing we want to do is, can we identify drugs that block growth of blood vessels in the eye? They could potentially be used in patients that have this unwanted blood vessel growth. How do we do this? This is the picture of the fish again, but now this is a specific, a genetically modified version of that fish. And actually, they took a protein from a jellyfish that makes things light up green, it makes all these proteins fluoresce bright green. And they modified the fish so that it only expresses it in blood vessels. So these are all the blood vessels along the trunk and tail of the fish. There's also some vessels in the eye. And if we take those eyes and we dissect out the eyes, then we see something like this. And at two days old, so 48 hours, when the fish are two days old, this primitive blood vessels around the lens. So this is the lens of the fish eye, like the lens of your eye. But by five days, you can see that it's formed this patterned bl uh, blood supply around the lens. So this is much more developed than this one. So what we look for is drugs that stop the development of this patterned vasculature in the eye. How do we do that? Well, we use uh, the larvae. I told you the larvae are quite small, so here's a one cent coin. Here is five different or six different larvae. So we can put five of them in this plate. This plate is around you know, the size of a, uh, two credit cards. So we can put five, up to 500 fish in one plate. We take a drug from different sources, put the drug in with the fish, put them there for two or three days, come back, take out the lenses from the fish and look to see if we've stopped blood vessels forming. So we screened about 2,000 compounds in a screen that took a year. And from those 2,000 compounds, we found this compound, which we've called quininib. And the details are just saying here that this is the number of vessels that form in the eye. And if we add more and more of the drug, we get less and less vessels forming. And it's easier to see here, here's an untreated fish, and here's a fish treated with that drug. And you can see there's a big difference in the formation of blood vessels in the control versus this fish that got this drug that we found. So potentially this drug could be developed to see if it can block unwanted blood vessel growth in patients. And that has to happen in preclinical models before it can move to clinical trial. The second story is, can we restore vision in a model of inherited blindness? So the first question here is, how can we tell how can a fish see? Okay, so you go to the optician, they give you this eye chart, you read the eye chart and they'll tell you how far you can see. Science has made many advances, but I still haven't been able to get the fish to read the eye chart as of yet. Okay, so we have to come up with a more clever way of doing it. And there's actually several ways of looking at visual behavior in fish. And when I was in Seattle doing part of my training for a couple of years, a group there had developed an assay that we use here. So this is the assay, and really you only need to concentrate on the video. So here's two fish. One is blind and one is not. And you probably won't be able to tell unless you're very clever, because I can't tell, they look identical. Now they're put in this system that has black and white stripes around it. So the fish are put in here, and now we begin to turn on these stripes to start them rotating. You notice that one of them starts to flick his eyes back and forth. So look at this guy here, flicking his eyes back and forth. He's able to track the movement of the stripes. So that fish has normal vision. The fish to the left has abnormal vision or is blind. We can rotate the drum the opposite way, and we can see now this guy flicks his eyes the opposite direction. The other fish doesn't. So we're able to use this simple assay to tell whether fish can see or not. 
So we have in the lab some inherited forms of blindness. These are zebrafish forms of inherited blindness. Again, this is where you get two bad copies, of, in this case a recessive disease. So here, the, these are the offspring of the fish, and three quarters of them are unaffected. So if they have normal vision, this is what they look like. But there's one quarter of them that inherited two bad copies, and this is what they look like. They don't look so bad, but they definitely don't look as normal as the wild-type fish. Now, if I, again, I show you, this is the optokinetic response that we just talked about. And here is the data from that. So this is these dye guys, this is these blind guys, they don't have responses. This is counting the number of times they flick their eyes back. And this is their siblings, and they have a very good response uh, to this optokinetic response. So we don't have time to go into all of the details, but we reckon that there was a drug that might be able to restore visual function in these fish. So this is the drug called trichostatin A, or TSA. And when we treat these blind fish, with TSA, they begin to look better. Not exactly like a wild type fish, but a lot better. And when we go and we treat them and then put them into the optokinetic response, these were the untreated fish, that's these guys, so they have very poor response. The same fish, but now treated with the drug, you can see they've significantly improved their visual function. Not as good as a wild type fish, but a lot better than the untreated fish. So it is possible to screen for drugs that can prevent retinal degeneration, or actually restore visual function in inherited models. So, there's a need to discover, what I'm trying to conclude, there's a need to discover and develop drugs that improve the treatment of blindness. Zebrafish are one way to do this, it's a large part of what we do, but they provide a very efficient system to screen for drugs in an unbiased fashion that affect these phenotypes of interest. And drugs that we've seen that block vessel growth or that prevent the loss of vision may be developed to treat patients with blindness or also some of these drugs are also being used to see if they can prevent cancer. And I'm going to finish there and I'll thank you for coming along today.